Hi, this video is here to help you solve problems using data from bar charts. Let's start by looking at this bar chart, which shows children's favourite flavours of ice cream. Before we start answering questions about a bar chart, it's important to check that we understand what each bar represents and also identify the scale that's being used. The horizontal line along the bottom of the bar chart can also be called the x-axis. In this bar chart, we can see that each of the bars is a flavour category. Each bar represents a different flavour of ice cream. The vertical line at the side of the bar chart can also be called the y-axis. In this bar chart, this tells us the number of children who chose each flavour. This scale is labelled in steps of two. This means that each of the horizontal lines on this chart has a value of two. Now let's answer some questions about the bar chart. How many children chose chocolate as their favourite flavour of ice cream? First, we find the bar that represents chocolate ice cream, and then we identify the value of the height of the bar. It's a good idea to use a ruler or a straight edge to make sure we read from the chart accurately. We can see that 16 children chose chocolate as their favourite flavour. We can label the bar with 16 because we might need this data again later. How many more children chose vanilla than mint? As we are comparing two bars, we first need to find out the totals of each of the bars. We can see that the height of the vanilla bar isn't labelled on the scale. As each interval has a value of 2, and the bar is in the middle of 10 and 12, it must have a value of 11. 11 children chose vanilla ice cream. How many children chose mint? Did you work out that seven children chose mint? To work out how many more children chose vanilla, we need to subtract seven from 11, giving us an answer of four. How many children were asked all together? We already know how many children chose chocolate, vanilla and mint. What information are we missing? How many children chose strawberry as their favourite flavour? Nine children chose strawberry. How will we work out how many children were asked all together? We need to add together each of the totals. 11, add 9, add 16, add 7 equals 43. So 43 children were asked all together. Let's look at another bar chart. This bar chart has horizontal bars instead of vertical bars, but it works in exactly the same way. Pause here and see if you can answer the following questions about the bar chart. Question one, how many children ordered a school dinner on Thursday? Question two, how many fewer children ordered a dinner on Tuesday than on Friday? Remember, fewer means smaller quantity or amount. In maths, it means a lesser value. Question three, on how many days did less than 60 children order a school dinner? Here are the answers. Question one, 55 children ordered a dinner on Thursday. The bar was exactly halfway between the intervals marked 50 and 60, and 55 is the midpoint of these two numbers. Question 2. 25 fewer children ordered a dinner on Tuesday than on Friday. This is because 50 children ordered a dinner on Tuesday, and 75 children ordered a dinner on Friday, and 75 subtract 50 equals 25. Question 3. Less than 60 children ordered a school dinner on two days. Tuesday and Thursday. Now it's time for a final challenge. This bar chart represents a data in the table. What number or words should be in each of the empty boxes? And here are the answers. How did you do? I hope this video helped you understand how to solve problems using data in a bar chart. If you're looking for more maths help, then we've got lots more of these videos on the Twinkle website, so why not go and check them out? Hi, this video is here to help you interpret dual bar charts. Dual bar charts are bar charts that show two pieces of information for each category. 
For example, this dual bar chart gives two pieces of information for each of the after school clubs. The number of year five children that attend and the number of year six children that attend. And all children can only attend one club. The key tells us that the blue bars represent year five children and the red bars represent year six children. Let's use this bar chart to answer some questions. Question one, which club has the same amount of year five members and year six members? We can answer this question by looking at and comparing the blue bars and the red bars in each category. The blue and red bars for dance are the same height. Therefore, dance club has the same number of year five members and year six members. Question two. What is the difference between the number of year five children who attend clubs and the number of year six children who attend clubs? This question isn't asking about a specific club, so we need to work out the information for each club first and then we can use this to answer the question. We can annotate or write on the chart as we go so that we're not trying to hold too much information in our heads. Let's look at the blue bars first. Eight year five children attend animation club, so we can write eight on that bar. Ten year five children attend hockey club. Eight year five children attend dance club. Nine year five children attend cooking club and seven year five children attend drama club. To work out the total number of year five children who attend clubs, we need to add these numbers together. Eight, add 10, add eight, add nine, add seven equals 42. 42 year five children attend after school clubs. Now we need to know how many year six children attend clubs. Pause here and work out the number of year six children who attend each club and then add them together to find the total. Did you work out that 39 year six children attend clubs? Finally, we need to calculate the difference between the number of year six children who attend clubs and the number of year five children who attend clubs. We can do this by subtracting the smaller number from the greater number. 42 subtract 39 equals three. So the answer to question two is three. Question three, which club has the most members all together? We have already labelled each bar with the number it represents. So now we can work out how many children in total attend each club. For animation club, there are eight year five members and seven year six members. So we can add these to work out that there are 15 members all together. Pause here and work out the total number of members of each of the clubs. Here are the totals of each of the clubs. How did you get on? Using these totals, we can see it was the hockey club that had the most members all together. Here's another bar chart. This one shows the number of adult and child cinema tickets that were sold over a week. Pause here and answer these questions about the bar chart. Question one, on how many days was the number of child tickets sold greater than the number of adult tickets sold? Question two, what was the total number of tickets sold at the weekend? Restart the video when you are ready to check your answers. How did you get on? The only day where the green bar representing children was higher than the purple bar representing adults was Saturday. Therefore, the answer to question one is one. For question two, you needed to find the total ticket sold for Saturday and Sunday. The answer was 600. Now it's time for a quick challenge. Look at this bar chart that's showing the average rainfall for London and Glasgow each month of the year. The numbers on the vertical scale have been hidden. If you know that the average rainfall in London in May was 50 millimetres, can you use this information to fill in the missing numbers? If we know that the average rainfall in London in May was 50 millimetres, we can see that the number missing from this box is 50. We can see that the scale is going up in steps of 50, so we can use this to fill in the rest of the boxes like this. I hope this helped you to understand how to interpret dual bar charts. 
If you're looking for more maths help, then we've got lots more of these videos on the Twinkle website. So why not go and check them out?